So if you're watching this video, you either have an Epson RD1 or RD1S like I have here, and your viewport is out of vertical alignment, which is pro apparently a somewhat common problem on these otherwise extraordinarily well-engineered cameras. So I called a few different camera shops, camera shops to see what it would cost to get this repaired. To my surprise, a few actually declined to do the work at all. They referred me to some specialty shops, which all gave a somewhat reasonable, similar answer of we need to actually see it and dig into it to figure out what's wrong and how much that's gonna cost. Um, expect to spend anywhere from 200 on the low end to 350 plus, depending on what it needs. Um, not to mention paying for shipping, insurance, waiting several weeks in the repair queue, etc. I decided to take the chance and do this on my own, having zero experience working on any camera. So that's the caveat to this video. In my case, it worked perfectly. It saved me hundreds of dollars, weeks of time, and within you know a few minutes, I'm already shooting much better on this camera than I was prior when I'm working on more complex uh, focus subjects. So uh, feel free if you want to take this chance yourself. If you find that this saved you hundreds of dollars in time, uh, feel free to buy me a coffee. I'm gonna drop my Venmo in the description below. I also wanna say thank you to Camera Quest. I used their write-up um, and a write-up that they linked to also on Camera Quest on how the rangefinder works in order to tackle this on my own. This is uh, the most easy, least risky approach, which is just involving, involving removing the hot shoe, not taking off the top plate. So if you wanna give this a shot and it works for you, awesome. Um, and if it doesn't, this is a thing you're doing at your own risk. So good luck. All right, I'm making this video because I just couldn't find a video source for this issue. And um, really it's gonna be a real time um, example of how this works or if it doesn't. I don't have experience working on cameras, so do this at your own risk. This is for a Epson RD1S uh, digital rangefinder camera. So there's a few forums, um, well, first I should say, this is specifically because I have my rangefinder out of vertical alignment, no matter <clears throat> whatever distance I'm at, I can get things to align horizontally. They seem to be in focus, but it's extremely frustrating, especially for faces, for other more complex subjects that aren't just architecture, uh, to get this camera um, in focus because I don't always know with that vertical misalignment on the rangefinder. Uh, so <clears throat> what we have to do from what I found, <clears throat> well, I should say one other thing. In adjusting the vertical alignment, I've found some anecdotal sources that say that the RD1S is different than the RD1 rangefinder, which is frustrating because like, I mean, even AI will say that because they find those same kinds of sources. Uh, however, I did find finally on a uh, camera quest, I believe, um, somebody kind of debunking this. So still no examples of this camera being opened. I'm not going to take off the top plate. My goal with this is to see if just by removing the hot shoe, if I can make the adjustments that I need on this camera's vertical rangefinder uh, adjustment. So let's do this together. So from what I understand, to remove this hot shoe, you have to do kind of two things at once. There are two reclaiming vertical retaining clips that go down this way on the hot shoe. So we need to get leverage pushing the hot shoe back as we are pushing it up in the rear. Um, and when I first was looking at this, I was kind of annoyed I couldn't get like my nail or something right there because of this tab. But actually, I believe that this tab functions to help you gain leverage. So what I'm going to do, I'm taking an extremely small flathead bit uh, on a screwdriver. See, it's very, very tiny. Um, I'm going to be pushing it in right into that spot. So I'm just going to go straight down into it. I'm going to tilt it back, lever it, lever that hot shoe towards the rear of the camera. And as I'm doing that, I'm just going to see if with my nails I can uh, lift up the rear hot shoe. So let's see if this works or not. Okay, so I'm in there. I'm going to start levering back. I got I get my nail under this hot shoe or not. I've got my nail under. Okay, I think I got the, I got that, that tab is up on the left. I don't know if you can see it, it's moving freely. There we go. Okay, so that worked out surprisingly well. I got it just lifted up off the back there. It's, it's loose now. So now I can lift it up and push it towards the front. 
So now I should just be able to hopefully pick it up. Let's see. I don't want to click it back down because it was a little annoying to do that. It's loose here. I just, I'm going to see if I can basically get all the way underneath that and just kind of kick it up from this area. So I'm going to use a, that longer bit again. I don't really have anything else here. So I think if I go down right here, actually, I'm just going to try and lift it up. Those retaining clips still want to hold it there. There we go. Awesome. So uh, those clips, it basically is like a spring mechanism too. So it's being held down all the time by that force. Let's see if we can get a view of that. There you go. Okay, so as far as I know, that's the only, already this is the only video that shows you how to remove the hot shoe um, on this camera. Now we've got access to these four screws. So that's, that's what we'll take off to remove the hot shoe itself. That's also what you can do to tighten up your hot shoe if you have an attachment that you find is like loose and jiggling around. So let's see if I got the right screwdriver for this. Don't strip these, just if you don't have the right tool, don't do it, go get the right tool. We got all four screws. This should slide right off. Beautiful. Okay, now I've got a little viewport inside there. I imagine I should be able to see the screws that I need to make the adjustment in there. Okay, so we can see two screws there. That's the far left one. Um, according to cam request, that one is the finder patch focus adjustment. This next one is the horizontal adjustment. And then that third larger screw that's slightly obscured, but we can still get to it, is the vertical adjustment for this camera. Um, also weird, because I've called two different camera shops here where I'm based and both of them declined to work on it. They sent me to like some specialty shops, um, which makes, you know, an average user get really discouraged. I'm like, Oh, I guess this isn't something I can do myself. Now we haven't got to the point of doing that yet. So we don't know, but, um, we're still going to try. So now what I'm going to do is figure out, um, which way I need to adjust it. So Okay, so according to this, minor adjustments to the vertical alignment screw won't affect the horizontal, but because it doesn't really specify beyond that, I'm guessing more dramatic alignments um, or adjustments may have an impact there. So mine isn't very significant, but it's enough that it is annoying and frustrating. So I'm just going to make some shots. All right, so what it says is the screw number three removes the finder patch lens bracket up and down minor adjustments don't affect the alignment um, clockwise equals move patch down so i'm going to make some adjustments um, i'm going to end this video i might restart it just to give you like the result update i'm also going to do a before shot if i can on the vertical alignment and then show you what happened after after turning that screw number three a little bit uh, see what we can do okay well i've got some very good news um, while that screw is the most awkward of all three to get to it's not impossible um, I, I guess I'm going to call this m very mixed, very good news with a caveat. Um, it is still possible to get to this screw. It was a little tricky with these screwdrivers. Um, this might be what you have to use. You do need something really narrow. I ended up using this, which just barely is make, making the fit. If I needed to do this adjustment again in the future, what I'm going to do is actually just grind down this bit. So it's all smaller, but I've got a lot more leverage on this kind of screwdriver. Um, you don't need to push hard. In fact, it's it's recommended you don't push down on these screws. Um, I forget the reason for that. This is all in the same article that I'm reading. Um, so screw number two apparently is uh, particularly sensitive to pressure. 
uh, the tension could cause the rangefinder patch to shift. So that's why you want to avoid pushing down. So if you can just get locked in and spin, that's what you want to do. The caveat here is that um, without a thread locking compound, and I guess you don't want to use anything stronger than Loctite green on this, the colors dictate the strengths, you know, red and blue and stuff like that could be for automotive, but green might be the most you would ever want to try on these. Because you can't actually remove screw number three completely with just the hot shoe access, uh, that may be the reason you want to take the hot plate off if you don't want to come back with this adjustment. Like if, if that one has any Loctite on there, it's possible that the elasticity of this compound could spin that screw back, moving me out of alignment. I won't know until I use this for a while to determine if that's going to happen in my scenario, but keep that in mind. So because my viewport was lower than my rangefinder, what I had to do is turn clockwise, or sorry, counterclockwise. Um, I, it took more adjustment than I believed. This article says a couple of degrees will, will make a significant adjustment. Uh, so I'm trying this at some medium ranges. I'm going outside and pointing at some far off objects closer to an infinity range. Uh, but a little bit of, pr at first I just didn't think it was working because I wasn't seeing any adjustment happen. It's possible I might've just broke the Loctite. So I just got to keep checking this adjustment over the next couple of days. Um, and see if it is there. And then I just got to hope it remains stable enough. If anything, it's just a lot better than it was. But you go in at this angle, I'm gonna do one small tweak. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but just make sure you can see the screw. Don't fish around for random objects. <clears throat> so get a position where <clears throat> you can see some light. Screwdriver, get it lightly in there until you're notched into that slot. Use the right size flathead, don't you know, strip an internal screw, give it some small spins, and then just put it up to a reference object, right? So when I started this, I was looking at a very specific object and I was also gauging things around that object. So how far off was my viewport? Um, what you could do, you know, for instance, if you got a far away wall, go put a sticky note on that wall where your viewport is um, versus the object you're trying to focus on. And then you can know if your adjustments are working, you can do a couple spins, see, oh, are you now above that sticky note, whatever, don't move your position. Several ways you can approach this, but I'm very pleased um, now. God, yeah, my vertical alignment is perfect. It took, it took me more than a 360 degree rotation in my case, but I, I got perfect focus on this camera. Um, to be completely transparent with you, I've only been using this camera for I don't know, 40, not even 48 hours. And I was frustrated to find this issue so pervasive amongst this camera, but you don't need to necessarily go to a professional if you want to take the chance and adjust this yourself with somebody who's never worked on a camera in any sense ever, um, just finding some online resources and you know, finding the courage to remove four Phillips head screws. You know, I saved a few hundred dollars at least and a couple weeks of time potentially. So, um, yeah, hopefully this was helpful for you. I wish I saw this video. This would have been great, but let me know if this worked out for you um, and good luck shooting.